Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quarkus application. I am Daniel L. So for several years, Kubernetes has turned into the foundation layer of cloud native application architecture to run microservice application and serverless. But they also change significantly for developers to control the inner and outer loop development workflows of Kubernetes at scale and speed. What capabilities are required in the application framework to build code and automating deployment quickly in line with the development loop and what benefits will developers gain from it? In this demo, I'm going to walk you through how Quarkus allows you to enhance the development loop by live coding on the remote or push the cluster, just like what you do in your local environment. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to use the Maven plugin command line to generate the Quarkus application. As you can see, we need to specify a project group ID and artifact ID and a project version and a class name. Reader resource will be generated automatically to explore the RESTful API. And also, we're going to use OpenShift extension, which allows you to uh, generate all OpenShift uh, manifest to deploy your application to remote OpenShift container platform. Once the build succeed, let's try to take a look at that. The new project directory just generated, and I try to open this project with the uh, Java editor, such as uh, VS Code. And when you go to Palm XML, you can find all dependencies all already pulled down your local environment, like a for example, Quarkus OpenShift extension already pulled down. And then when you go to uh, Greater source the Java file, which uh, exposes uh, REST endpoint, and uh, just hello, return code, hello, REST easy. Okay, go to change the directory, and uh, try to run this application as uh, Quarkus dev mode. So you can actually run this application uh, with the live coding capability on your local machine which means whenever you change code, the Quarkus automatically detects the change code and repackage and rebuild and redeploy as a hotspot technology without any human innovation. As you can see, the profile dev activated and the live coding activated. So cool. So let's go to a uh, web browser and try to access endpoint like hello. And then we're gonna find the end code, the hello rest EG, you can see that. And then, uh, the next move, uh, we're going to change the code just like uh, imagine, okay, I need to change my application, like a return uh, output, the hello rest is from local, and try to refresh your web browser one more time, and you can find that the new uh, output will be showcased. It's pretty simple, and this is the how to, uh, you change your code and the right coding. Behind the scenes, the Quarkus automatically detect the change code in the hub it replace uh, to your code, it just took one second to make that happen. Pretty cool, isn't it? So I'm gonna stop my local environment and I need to deploy this application to OpenShift the container platform. In order to do that, I need to uh, package in this mutable application because uh, we need to uh, still live coding functionality when you deploy this application to OpenShift. So even though this application will be containerized, but still this application mutable, which means we can change the application code. And then the library load the password, this should be uh, communicate between client and server. You can put into any uh, random uh, text. And then here are just some configuration to uh, deploy this application to open shift, like a container image build. And uh, we're going to use a client trust the certificate on open shift container platform and target environment Kubernetes cluster, definitely open shift. And then we're going to export this application using open shift route capability. And then there are one environment variable to use live coding that mode. So this is my open shift container platform, but there's no resources here. So I'm going to need to make sure I already logged in this project. So using OC command line, and uh, OK, I'm here. And then we're going to use Maven command line once again using Maven packaging. But we needed to uh, pass down port cursor Kubernetes deploy equal true, which means so once the, your mutable application is packaged, and then uh, OpenShift the source to image processor will be 
uh, trigger to deploy this application to OpenShift container platform. In the meantime, uh, this processor will containerize this application to Linux container image and uh, push it into inside the OpenShift container registry. Okay, build success. And then uh, let's try to a uh, little bit drill down target directory and then you can find the Quarkus app. It's a new directory uh, that are put in the your immutable uh, application. Uh, for example, Quarkus run.jar file is the immutable application. Okay, so application is deployed in a container platform. And you click on this part and then you can find the view logs and then uh, here is the view logs and you can find uh, profile that activated and live coding activated just like uh, we saw in our local environment. So which means that you are all set to ready to go uh, to use uh, live coding. Try to access the endpoint on official container platform. Okay. Hello, less easy from local. That's well, what exactly the same thing saying output we saw in the local environment. All right, just copy the route URL and then let's try to uh, run local environment with the remote development. In order to do that, we need to add one more configuration such as the live load URL, which he refers to our route URL. And then we don't need to uh, this open shift configuration because we don't need to uh, trigger uh, open shift S2 build process or whenever we change the code. Okay, try to run Quarkus and remote dash dev, which allows you to run Quarkus application as a remote dev mode, which means uh, your Quarkus runtime try to access a remote server, like a connected to, to remote server based on the remote URL. Okay, so pretty cool. And the next step, let's go back to our application code and change the output like from OpenShift. And then go back to uh, our web browser, try to refresh this web browser. And then we gotta, uh, we gotta have a new output, hello rest easy from OpenShift. Just like the same functionality we did in a local environment. Behind the scene, uh, the Quarkus remote dev environment actually detected the change the code, create the resource Java classes, and then try to send the application classes and jar, mutable jar to open the container platform. Let's try it one more time just to have fun. And then uh, with the Quarkus remote dev, and then reload uh, web browser once again, and then we got a new uh, output here. Pretty easy and pretty cool. Okay, so today uh, in this demo, you learn how Quarkus is capable of enhancing the development loop by activating the live coding capability from your local machine to the remote container environment, for example, OpenShift, but also you can actually run this capability on vanilla Kubernetes and container engine, etc. So this is a what new cloud native Java runtime you should provide for developers to simplify the development workflow from writing code to build, run, develop, and deploy Microsoft's and service application at speed. And just be sure you don't need to use this functionality in your product environment because it might cause unexpected functional change immediately while you are running the remote demo. mode. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and have a good rest of the day.